Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, good Wednesday practice from our guys. You know, this time of year, get an opportunity to practice in this kind of weather. Uh, guys are excited about it. Yeah. You know, we didn't have that opportunity last year, and so uh, the guys, that especially the seniors, that have one more opportunity, they relish each one, and uh, we're excited about the challenge. It was a really good TCU team. So, uh, with that, questions. With today being start of early signing period. Is there any difference on the field? Like, do the guys pay attention to it, or is it kind of after practice they'll start looking at maybe maybe who's coming? Yeah, I think a, a little bit. You know, for the coaches, obviously, last night calling all of our guys, make sure uh, everyone's in the boat. Um, you know, I think some of the guys that are returning, you know, hey, who are, who are next year's teammates, guys that maybe they hosted, uh, they, they, you know, they knew about those guys this morning. So there's a little different buzz. But once we get on the field, it, it was all TCU. You know, today was a big third down red zone day. So uh, the focus was there. And our guys have really done a nice job practicing all year long. And here we are week 13. Uh, or actually, it's probably week 17 or 18, whatever it is. Um, but uh, uh, for game 13, I thought our guys' focus was really good. When you're kind of looking at how practice changes as you guys have the extra bowl week, I mean, what kind of changes do you guys make? Is, is this week mostly install, next week fine tuning, or how does that kind of shake out? Yeah, you know, uh, when, when you're trying to plan bowl practice, I think Coach Wilcox has done a really nice job of concentrating on development of our team the first couple of weeks. Um, we were on the road, we practiced on the weekend, getting a lot of our core concepts taught to the younger guys and our older guys, trying to protect them a little bit, get their cardio going, but not necessarily banging. Uh, on Tuesday, we changed the focus to TCU. So we went a Tuesday, Wednesday practice uh, yesterday and today. Tomorrow will be a walkthrough like our normal Thursday will be. We'll come back on Friday and Saturday and have a modified Tuesday, Wednesday again. Um, we'll travel on, on uh, Sunday, and then we'll have uh, a Thursday, Friday when we get to the bowl site. So our guys are kind of used to this pattern of practicing a couple days, really practicing hard and chasing the ball, and then kind of a day of rest a little bit, and then crank it back up. And, Hopefully that formula will work for us. When you're looking at TCU's offense, is there anything in particular that kind of stands out to you? Yeah, they've got a lot of really explosive players, uh, uh, particularly number one. He's he's a guy that uh, they try to get as many touches in as many different ways. Uh, reminds me of uh, the kid from Colorado. You know, he's a really, really explosive player, and whether they get him in the backfield, hand it to him, wildcat, put him in the slot, he's normally out at, the, at you know their right, the number one receiver as, a, as an X. Uh, but when they want them to get them the ball, they're going to find ways to, to get them mashed up on people or just find a way to easily get them the ball. Is there anything different when you are looking at a team and you're trying to game plan for a group that has had so many different injuries? Um, yes and no. I mean, you, you see a lot of different plays from them. And so you can see a little bit of that trying to find what works. Uh, sometimes you see a team that has very few injuries and they have a bread and butter that they go to. So there's a little bit of more of a smattering of, of different plays. Uh, but I think we, we have a pretty decent understanding of who their playmakers are, and, and we just got to figure out how they're going to get them to this week. And they've had, obviously, a lot of time to study our tape and see our uh, you know, tendencies, and I'm sure they'll try to you know, do some things to exploit that. With the guys on the secondary, what kind of makes Travion Beck such, such a success as a nickelback for you guys? Uh, a couple things. He, he's got great short area quickness. Um, the only thing that exceeds that is probably his confidence. Uh, but but as a defensive back, you've got to play with a lot of confidence, and he does. Uh, he does a, a really good job of studying tape, understanding splits and formations, understanding you know our coverages and, and where we need to be and where we want to disguise at times. So when he puts all that together, you know, combined with that physical talent, uh, you know, it makes a good combination. Another guy in the secondary who's done superbly well for you guys. I mean, you have two, with both Cam and Ashton. Um, they're racking up accolades. It also seems like with Cam. Teams aren't targeting as much. It's a little hard to know just what he can do. But what kind of have those guys? What kind of strides have those guys really taken this season? Well, I, I think you know we knew going in that they were going to be improved from a year ago, and uh, it's hard to say they they've exceeded expectations because we had really really high expectations for them. But they've been extremely productive. Uh, we knew a year ago when those guys played for you know for basically for the first time uh, that they were going to be highly competitive, great ball skills. Uh, but Gerald Alexander's done a tre tremendous job teaching them the art of the game, uh, how to get their study habits, understanding splits and, you know, uh, different stems so that they can anticipate routes. And then both those guys have such good ball skills that they've been able to not just break passes up, but, you know, take them the other way. And uh, two of the biggest reasons that, that we've been, you know, so improved on defense this year are those two guys.
Alex Funch has just said that uh, you and Coach Wilcox and he all kind of arrived here at the same time, and, and he came away believing pretty quickly that, that this was going to take it in the right direction. Did, did you see similar things from him that, that he would fit into what you guys wanted? Well, it was interesting because you know he was really recruited for a different system. Yeah. yeah. And as we were working those guys out in January and February, he was one of the, the few guys that we thought, okay, let's look and see how he fit. Um, I think it probably helped him not having been tied to any system. Uh, he came in like a piece of clay and said, "Ready, you know, let's mold me." And uh, really pleased with his development. Uh, he hadn't played outside linebacker, uh, you know, prior to this. I tease him all the time. I don't think there was a, a football in his neighborhood when he grew up because sometimes when you throw it to him, it looks like you know there's a foreign object coming at him. But uh, he's he's really uh, done a great job in, in the major things we asked. That's setting an edge. Uh, and he's done a great job in the run game and doing that uh, really improved from a year ago. Uh, and then we asked the guys to rush the passer, and his pass rushes has really dramatically improved. His, his hands, his, his get off, uh, I don't know what his total sack number is, but uh, he, I think he's close to leading our team in, in, in sacks, uh, definitely in pressures. Um, and so he's, he's done the things that, that you know, we want our outside linebackers to do and really set a nice precedent for, for those younger guys coming up. That's what I was going to say, even some of the sack numbers that aren't there, he, he seems to affect a quarterback on a game-to-game -game basis. No doubt. And, and that's one of the things we, we try to you know, get our guys to understand, that it's not just the sacks. Mm -hmm. it's, it's batted balls. It's pressures on the quarterbacks. It's hits on the quarterback, mm -hmm. legal hits. Yep, yep. And uh, uh, he's done a really nice job you know, from a production standpoint with all those things that I think you know, most teams we play know where 36 is at. And, and a lot of times their protections, you know, they, they want to make sure that he's accounted for. He said that he noticed a difference when, when Cam Good's out there. Maybe maybe that's where the attention goes a little bit. But but I, I assume opponents yeah. know, know where 36 is now, right? I, I, exactly. Um, he had the advantage of having Cam on the other side, so they really couldn't, you know, double him. He's, he's seeing more attention now. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I think we're developing Tevin. He's, he's becoming a force on the other side. Some of those younger guys are starting to come on. So hopefully, you know, by him drawing a lot of attention, we, we can, you know, open up opportunities the other side. We're good? Thank All right. you, Coach. Yeah. Appreciate it.